again to Basketball Australia partners, Sport Oz, Spalding and Game Day. This is Community TV, the coverage of the Generation Next under 20 Footlocker National Championship 2023. The semi-final between New South Wales and Queensland arch rivals. It's a, almost a state of origin type atmosphere as the blue go up against the maroon once again. And this will be a great game. There's a number of Australian junior representatives on this floor. Uh, both teams will have understood that if they want to get through the gold medal game, they know they, they're going to have to go through each other at some stage. Interesting that Kay Ruse has started. We spoke extensively about her in yesterday's performance as we see New South Wales at the first point, courtesy of Felicity Henderson. And a great take early on that one. That's uh, it's a, a good, balanced New South Wales group. They saw the opening real early and they went at it straight away. Twydale finds Hansen in the corner, going inside. Putting up the shot there was Petrie. Couldn't connect, but she does draw the foul. And she's a really difficult matchup, is Petrie. She's, uh, she's one of those Australian junior representatives we spoke about earlier. She's the centre of excellent athlete. Uh, really high IQ. Like, uh, talking to a lot of the coaches that have had her previously, uh, all of them speak about the same thing. Really high IQ athlete, makes great decisions, and it's a difficult matchup with a, a great balance of size and speed. And also spoke yesterday about the importance of uh, capitalising from the free throw line, and she's done that with the first. Yeah. Spine bounce, Jessica Petrie, two for two, and we're locked at two apiece. Here's Gay Ruse in the early break, and she banks in two. Queensland will be disappointed with that. That's a, that's a really easy two points to give up, especially off the free throw situation where you can get your defensive transition organised before it ends up in that situation. So they'll be a little disappointed, but a great kick ahead by New South Wales. Petrie fires from outside and connects. She's got five points. And that's a bit of a danger. You see Isla Jufferman's guarding Petrie on that. So Petrie will feel like she has a little bit of a foot speed advantage there. So having to guard on the perimeter there will be really difficult for Jufferman throughout. But here's where she goes to work in the post as well against Petrie. Jufferman's got a fair bit of an opposition in her face. Can't get it away. Here's Petrie. Bringing it up the floor. Petrie takes it to the glass. Can't connect, but does draw the foul. And that's that foot speed we spoke about again. That's, that's going to be what Petrie wants to do. If Jufferman's going to have to guard her on the perimeter, she's going to try and do as much as she can to try and play downhill and make Jufferman defend her off the bounce. We saw at the other end when New South Wales were on offense, Petrie's strong enough to be able to guard Jufferman's one out, but we saw the, the health defense come across and the double team come from Twida. Petrie doesn't make the first. She's quite athletic for a center. Yeah, she's probably the, the new school post player where they're, they're not necessarily the, the immobile players. They tend to be a little bit more mobile now than they used to be. And she's shooting at 50% from the free throw line after connecting with her first two and then missing on her next two. Pittman and combines with Henderson and now Pittman drives to the basket. Can't finish. Ripped down by Hansen for Queensland. Now Petrie outnumbered but gets it away and doesn't finish. New South Wales on the fast break. From the corner and connecting from outside. It's Kairou's got five points. It's going to be important for New South Wales as well. They've obviously a group with very government's focus, but we see McDowell White being doing a great job in fronting the post and help defense coming down from Petrie. They're going to need more contributors than just what Juffman's can provide them offensively. Queensland fire and miss once again. So the advantage by two, the advantage by four for the Blues. Finished by Carla Pittman. We've just seen them a real advantage here with New South Wales when they're able to get out and run. Queensland haven't done a great job to this point of being able to stop transition by either right? ball pressure up the floor to, to try and stop the guards from kicking the ball ahead. We're just getting numbers back behind the ball so they're not giving up layups in transition, whereas the New South Wales guards, and we saw it a little bit last night when they played South Australia, very adept at kicking the ball ahead, trying to run as best they possibly can and get those cheap, easy layups early on in transition. So they've got the early advantage in New South Wales. They lead at 9-5, 7-26 remaining in the first term. And once again, a nice little crowd starting to gather here in the Geelong Arena show court. Very vocal group, the New South Wales group we saw yesterday at the, uh, at the back in the annex. Uh, very supportive and you know, trying to drive their team on where they possibly can. 
and what's your knowledge of the respective programs in New South Wales and Queensland? Yeah, both very strong programs, obviously. It's a little similar. We were talking about it in the ACT game last night. ACT don't really get to combine with anyone when they come to an under-20s championships, whereas the Queensland North and South come together, New South Wales Country and Metro come together. So the depth over, overall is, is a lot better for the teams in this situation. So there's a lot of athletes here that have been to multiple uh, national championships previously. Uh, very difficult teams to make the under-21 when you do combine with the other half of your state. I do recall the under-18 champs win them a couple of years ago and having the north and the south of Queensland. And, of course, there's a fair bit of geographical territory covered by that particular state. So this is New South Wales at the line for one. And they can't stretch the lead. Petrie with the defensive rebound. Dow White. Petrie puts the ball to the floor and drives to the hoop. Does a lap of honour, drops out. Juffermans with the defensive rebound. We saw Juffermans calling for help defence there as Petrie got her up in the air on the shot fake. Juffermans had to come out and defend her out there. Petrie absolutely has that range to be able to stick it from out there. So the help defence from New South Wales is going to be vital as Petrie just ringed out down that end and we see a travel down to New South End. Yeah, Carla Pittman will be disappointed with that. Handing it back to the Queenslanders. Clydale lost possession. New South Wales now. Carews. And Foy. Kicking it around. Clock County down for New South Wales. K. Roos fires from outside, front of the iron, doesn't go. Juffermans with the offensive rebound. She had two. Great work by Juffermans. They're really patient. You saw how well Petrie guarded her in that post there. They're really patient, waited for the ball to, to get moved around. Through. The shot goes from New South Wales. She found a great angle to keep Petrie on the back there. Petrie really disciplined, didn't foul in that situation either. Hanson tries to fire from outside, doesn't connect. 11-5. Six-point advantage with New South Wales. Finals berth on the line for the winner of this contest. Pittman denied. Can that lift New South Wales? Uh, can that lift Queensland? Queensland inject Jade Peacock into the contest. And the Blues looking to build on this six point advantage. They look to Juffermans, he kicks it out. Getting it away just in time, and Felicity Henderson finishes. She's got four points. A little bit dangerous here for Queensland. They, they don't want this lead to stick out any further than this if they can help it. It's, uh, it becomes a bit of a mental battle when it starts to get into that double figure region. A little dart lost possession. New South Wales on the charge once again. Henderson in board to Juffermans. Goes up against Petrie. Doesn't complete. Wins it back, gets another opportunity. And this time she does. Well, Queensland now are going to really have to make a decision on what they do defensively because the fronting of the post is effective, but it is putting them in difficult rebounding position now. So they have to be really mindful of what they do defensively, but a lot of their problems are actually starting on the offensive end. They can't get a score at the moment. They've only got the five for the game. And that was from, uh, from Petrie at the start, from the foul line, contributed a lot of that. So when you look at it, one of five from the field so far for Queensland, that's, that's not going to help you in this situation. Martin and Donnelly injected into the game for New South Wales. Ten point spread enjoyed by New South Wales. Clydale offloads to Mattel White. Clydale in the corner. Open shot. That's what Queensland require. Getting it away. That was Aaron Harvey. Just see the difference there. Ball goes through the net, down that end, three points, brings it back to a seven point margin. Down here, you get a stop defensively. This is where some momentum can start to build for Queensland. Yes, 
Queensland will be hoping Harvey's tray will really lift the team. Got another opportunity now as the space is cleared. In fact, foul called. Fidel trying to do the right thing there, putting her body on the line with that screen to try and get their guards open in the backcourt. Uh, paid the price for it. So uh, physically, anyway, they still have the ball. Courage by Twidal. So Harvey, who lifted Queensland in recent moments, is Twidal. Queensland from outside, overcooks the shot. Jufferman's reaches high and rips down the defensive board. New South Wales once again. Martin dishes out. And New South Wales at three, thanks to Emma Donnelly. Good offense from New South Wales there. Ball goes in, gets some, uh, some movement on the defensive end from Queensland. Easy perimeter shot. That's, and it's, a, it's a great jumper there from Jess Petrie, but it's, it's fairly heavily contested. They're going to need to get a little bit more movement in their offense, Queensland at the moment, to try and get a higher quality shot. Petrie up to seven points. Leads scoring for the Queenslanders. They are in deficit by eight. New South Wales fire from the corner. Queensland just going to his own the last possession or so just to try and take a little bit of stick out of the game from New South Wales. Petrie from a long way from home and she lands the three. Well, carrying the scoring load at the moment, it would be fair to say, is Petrie. They're still in this zone. So it'll be interesting to see what New South Wales do, whether they try and target their post still, whether they look for that high post area they did yesterday against South Australia or if they can still hit the perimeter. That's a fairly wide open shot there. The hard part with zones is trying to keep players off the rebounding contest. So you're not really matched up with the player as such. So whilst it might be effective there, they do have to be very conscious of the offensive board. Felicity Henderson capitalises on a pretty scrappy piece of play. She's up to six points. The advantage back to seven for New South Wales. Petrie might go it alone. Doesn't drop there on that occasion for Aaron Harvey. The deficit remains seven. A little bit of a staring match here too between the two coaches. But who's going to go to their bench a little bit heavier? Neither Petrie or Jackman have come out of the game yet. So one of them will have to come out at some stage. I suggest when one goes, the other one will too. Donnelly fires. A little too heavy. Queensland with an opportunity with two and a half remaining in the first term. They're down by seven. Twydale. This is Peacock. New South Wales defensive pressure is absolutely enormous. Peacock fires from a long way from home. She saw the clock counting down and in fact didn't even hit the ring and as a consequence it's a shot clock violation. You know I mentioned that there was like super physical defense in the backcourt with the uh, with the New South Wales guards in particular. So Queensland are going to have to look at different ways to enter the offense. They don't want their guards holding onto the ball for too long. They have to try dribble enters, back cuts, high post releases, different ways to just start their offense because the, the over dribbling isn't helping them at the moment. This is Kay Roos. Juffermans. Henderson. Inboard to Juffermans. And she was certainly outsized for opponent. That was a nice mismatch for New South Wales and Juffermans adds two. It was great patience by the New South Wales guards though, to, to try and find the right angle to get the ball in there. I think when you have dominant post players, you can almost go in there too much and try and throw the ball in there every time. It's just having that patience to try and find the best angle to get that in. Petrie. Queensland can't get it away. They would do this time. Overcooking the shot. Martin with the scraps. Now she'll drive. In board to Juffermans. Banks it in for two. Juffermans up to eight points. Yeah, this, is, this is really dangerous here for Queensland. So it's out to 11 just before the quarter time break. They know there's a, a chance to regroup coming, but they need to have a couple of big possessions and Petrie sticks her second three for the game. Petrie on fire. She's got 13 points for Queensland. 13 of 16. They trail by eight. We're inside the last... 45 seconds of our first term here at the arena in Geelong for Community TV. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. I know there'll be plenty of viewers from both New South Wales and Queensland from the corner. The Blues fire and can't connect. Now Queensland on their bike. Petrie fires from the car park and lands it again. She is on 
fire that with is 16 the points. Ultimate heat check. That is a long way behind the three point line and it has just jacked that thing. And honestly, why not? She's carrying their scoring load. She is just in a purple patch right at the moment. Extraordinary wide open shot for New South Wales to respond. Queensland now, seconds counting down, needs to get the shot away and does not get the shot away in time. So we go to quarter time with a five point advantage for New South Wales, 24-19 over Queensland and Jess Petrie leads the scoring with 16 points. Erin Harvey has three for Queensland, but for New South Wales, the leading team, Juffermans has eight points, Felicity Henderson six and Carews has five. And it's been a real battle between the, the two heavy scorers of both bottom age athletes that both played in that under 17 women's team last year that, that went to Hungary for the World Championships in Jess Petrie and Isla Juffmans. Would be very familiar with each other, go to the centre of excellence as well. They're, they're involved in a, a lot of their junior teams. So from there in, they're very familiar with each other. It's really going to be which supporting cast can step up and help them along the way. We're, we've seen obviously Petrie carry a lot of the scoring load for Queensland. They have plenty of good scorers in their team as well. Dart, Hanson. Uh, Lulu, all very, very capable scorers. So one of them at least is going to need to step up and help assist. Where there's been, we probably saw it yesterday as well against South Australia. There was a little bit more scoring balance from the New South Wales group. So they know they can get their points from somewhere else. So I think it'll be whichever team adjusts to that earliest and it starts to get more of their players involved and have a couple of different threads at the basket. That'll be the one that takes advantage here. Well, they certainly did remedy some of the issues that were emerging there, Queensland. They looked like they were really in strife there for some time, but they've got it back to a five-point deficit. And once again, on the back of Jess Petrie, just how how much of this game she can play because uh, this rich vein of form that she's demonstrated across the first term, you wouldn't imagine that's going to be sustainable across four quarters. Well, I hope it is from a spectator perspective. It'd be uh, amazing. It'd be fantastic result. It does look like she may have checked out of the game here. Uh, but it looks like Juffman is still in. So this is going to be where it's a little bit of a test for Queensland. Can they still find ways to score, but can they guard Juffman down the other end of the floor? So the schemes will have to change a little bit. I wouldn't be too surprised if Queensland go to a little bit of a zone to try and have a little bit more of a pack D defensively. But we'll see what both coaches have made the adjustment with. And you're right, Petrie sits down. So significant responsibility falls onto the shoulders of the likes of Tyler Fatua and Summer Hansen as uh, Isla Juffermans remains in the game. New South Wales with first use for second term. Martin looking to build on her five point advantage. In board for Juffermans once again. Good defensive pressure by Queensland, they win it back. That's Lulu Twildale, she worked real hard to get around on that post. Managed to make it as difficult as possible. Sometimes you can have a lot of success guarding digs with smaller people because they look to try and target them a little bit too much where you see the agility and the foot speed of Lulu Twildale there get around and make that difficult defensively. You can certainly see some players, they're all obviously enormously competitive, but you see some players that just have that tenacity that is next level and Lulu Twildale appears to be demonstrating that right at the moment. Fantastic guard. She, uh, another one of the under-17 women's crew from last year. Had a, a really good tournament. Can absolutely score the ball. She's uh, a real pest defensively up the floor as well as uh, Queensland starts to make some inroads into the score again. Well, you mentioned Lil Dart earlier as a scoring option and she's on the board now. So the margin's back to just three points and Queensland will be feeling a heck of a lot better about this contest. Particularly now as there's a turnover. Just a breakdown for New South Wales as it's Dart goes on the charge once again. To Hanson, and they add another two, and all of a sudden, it is back to a one-point game. Lil Dart, what a phenomenal effort to make that pass. She had no right to be able to get that pass through then, and they managed to find a way. So New South Wales have been asked some questions. His K. Ruse puts the ball to the floor, dishes out. Donnelly. Now Henderson. Henderson almost loses the handle. Gets it off to Crawshaw. Great set there defensively for Queensland. They got New South Wales late into the clock. They have given up the foul at the very end. Twidale probably just a little bit late getting there, but a, a really good de possession defensively for them to apply. A couple of deflections. A, it became really disjointed offense on the, the New South Wales end. So Crawshaw, so only recently introduced into this game, looking to build on her team's one-point advantage. Plenty of iron, but it doesn't go. 
Another free throw to come. 8.47 remaining in the second term of our under-20 semi-final. The footlocker. Hope you're enjoying the coverage on Community TV. She doesn't make either, so not really able to capitalise there on that occasion. Here's Pittman. Crawshaw. Martin. Nice work by Martin. Can't finish. Hanson. And now Queensland with an opportunity through Holmes. Phoebe Holmes drives, dishes to the corner. Defensive work by Crawshaw. The versatility of Summer Hanson on the defensive end to be able to switch out guard guards but also guard bigs has been really vital for Queensland down that end of the floor, especially with Petrie out, who's done a lot of the work defensively. So it's, uh, it's a really great luck to have for Queensland to have Summer Hanson fill that role for them. Little Dart goes hard at the basket once again, doesn't finish. Henderson, now Pittman, drives. Can't complete the layup. Queensland's really up the intensity. Here's Twydale, stops at the three-point line, fires, doesn't hit it. Nice work by Dart. And there's a two coming from the hand of Fatua. We just see New South Wales, now that they're behind by a point, start to bring Juffman back in. So there's a, there's a little bit of uh, nervousness, I'd suggest, on the New South Wales end, worrying about, you know, can we stay with this? Can we break momentum? Do we need a timeout or can we just make this up? Hey, Bruce. She's up to seven points. She impressed us yesterday in the quarterfinal. Showing some good form again today. Twydale. Just tenacious in her attack on the basket. It yeah, did a really good job there of just getting her shoulders past the defender and trying to find ways to get on the rim. She is more of a driver than a shooter, but she certainly has range from out on the perimeter. So the defense will have to close that out, but that does create driving angles for her. So it's, uh, it's a difficult matchup on the New South Wales end. I'd suggest now that we've seen Petrie and, uh, and Juffman step back into the game, we're, we're going to go back to the old adage of what can Petrie do and can Juffman's answer? It's almost like Jackie Brown saw Juffman's preparing to come back on. And Petrie, you're back into the game. Here's Dwight Isle at the line. Can't hit the first. Queensland. Leading by one. In fact, uh, trailing by one they were, and now we're locked at 26 apiece. So what a great contest. New South Wales attacking the glass. That was Pittman. Jaffermans attracts some attention. That's the issue with being in that zone for Queensland. Whilst it, it does provide you with a little bit of help on, on post entries in particular, you can lose track of your player in, a, in an offensive rebounding contest. And, and Summerhand really didn't need to foul on that one. That's one of those times where you really just needed to play that one straight up. Duffman's a dominant player in the game that we saw yesterday, the quarter final. She's got nine points. Doesn't hit the second. So it's a great battle between the bigs today. Petrie has 16 points, Juffman 9. Both the real presence on the boards. Queensland attack the glass once again. Crawshaw looks down the defensive rebound. Approaching mid midway mark of the second term. Pittman and Henderson combine. Now Martin just prepares to reset. Gets a bit of space, goes herself. Front of the iron, Crawshaw with the, with the offensive rebound. Martin fires and connects with six seconds remaining on the shot clock. Gives the team the advantage. Really Five great offensive rebound there from Crawshaw. And uh, as we see Petrie fire away from the three-point line, just checking if she's still hot. Uh, but does draw the foul on Duffman as she makes a, a great cut towards the rim. So it's, uh, it's a great way to apply pressure. That is the second personal on Isla Duffman. So they will have to just manage this a little bit on the New South Wales end. Well, that's a can become a cause for concern when this battle between the two bigs is just enormous, isn't it? It's fantastic. And it's so, so uh, great that they've got this pre-existing relationship having played representative all together. Petrie looking to add to her 16 points. quite the complete game to this point in time. Can't make the second. 
Good work by Hansen. Deemed a contested ball, and it's going to be Queensland to come up with it. Bit of his own defence here from New South Wales and clock on the baseline. End of matchup. Dart fires. Finds the iron, but it doesn't go. Juffman's with the defensive board. Here's Martin. Donnelly. And Henderson. Pittman. One way, then the other. Tracks a crowd. Gets great, the shot away. Great defence from Dart there, but just another offensive board for New South Wales. Queensland really do need to tidy this up when we get there. We see uh, Hanson and Jumperman going to work off the ball against each other to try and find an open player, but Hanson doing a great job of just taking away angles. Down to two seconds, getting the shot away. Draws the foul. With about a second remaining on the shot clock. Oh, that breaks your heart if you're the, the Queensland coach there. You defended fairly well there for... 20 something seconds, giving up a no board, another 13 seconds, and then the foul on the one second one. That's a that's a heartbreaker. It's just that game awareness, isn't it, really? It is tough to do. Like it's uh, we all want our players to close off possession defensively, but you know, it's uh, New South Wales making the count from the foul line at this stage. One of two. Hansen with the defensive rebound. Here's Dart, Twydale and Petrie. 17 points, Petrie already. Dart looks for Petrie once again. He used to provide a great matchup against Guffermans. Goes for the hoop. Can't finish. Now Henderson. Beyond the midway mark of the second term. Henderson dishes. Didn't quite hit the target, but Donnelly did well enough to salvage something. Martin, shot clock counts down. Great defensive work by Queensland once again. Yeah, that's a fantastic possession from Queensland there from a, a number of areas. Summer Hanson, great job to get the pressure on the closeout. Uh, Petrie, fantastic job talking that on ball screen. A really good defensive possession there for Queensland. Particularly think of uh, the shot clock counting down and shooters being aware. Just wonder from a defensive set, the opposing team, and how much emphasis and how much awareness do you think from a game perspective do they have of the shot clock counting down? Yeah, you certainly hope that both benches are going to count that down for you because there is a lot going on in the game. And, and even now, what we're seeing, this has been a really physical game to this point. It's actually been refereed really well because they are allowing them to play, but they've been consistent with what they've fought and what they've let go. So from this perspective, you're seeing a lot of people really struggling to get open. They can't get open on the catch on the wing easily. They're getting chased off screens. And it's really physical. It's actually really good to watch at this stage. New South Wales by four, 31-27. Petrie just waits for the cavalry to arrive. And in fact, she turns and she lands the three. That's, uh, that will go down as the maybe interesting shot selection. But when you've, uh, when you've shot the ball as well as Petrie had, so to that point, she was four or six from the three. I believe that's her fifth three. Why not? If you're going to do the work to get out on the break, take the rewards. She's got 20 points. I really, for all intents and purposes, she looked as if she was going to just allow teammates time to get into position and maybe look to another option. But she chose to go alone and with 4.11 remaining in the first half, trailing by just two. It's one of those shots that, as a coach, you sit there and go, oh, please don't shoot. Hey, great job. It's gone in. Uh, fantastic. Really happy with that. So you, you do have to sort of take the good with the bad at, with that at times. But, geez, it's been a lot more good than bad. From her, she, yeah, in particular, she's been outstanding, hasn't she? She has been It's fantastic. a great battle between Juffermans and Petrie. And Juffermans, uh, well, Petrie leads the scoring for the game. She has 20 points. And uh, she has Erin Harvey with three and a couple of players on two. And for New South Wales, who lead the game by two, Juffermans has nine points. The scoring is spread. Carews has seven points. And Jeff Henderson has six points. So the respective teams doing it quite differently. Yeah, and even with that, like New South Wales are leading the rebound count by seven at the moment. So that is something that, that Queensland will need to tidy up. If they can start to get a little bit more of a control on the rebound, this margin may actually fall in the Queensland favour rather than being down by two. They can really extend and get back into this.
Just a little shot clock, sorry, game clock adjustment right at the moment. 31-29, New South Wales with the ascendancy. Early doors, it looked as if it was all one-way traffic, but Queensland have been very competitive since uh, the latter stages of the first term. Yeah, they've done a great job to stay in this. It, uh, we saw the margin get out to the sort of 10, 12 points, and it looked like it might start to get a little bit ugly for, for the Queensland girls, but uh, they've done a great job. And we've just seen a, a timeout from New South Wales. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if that's clock related or if that's referee related, but uh, it'll be interesting to see now, because they've had an extended break here, what they do. Does Queensland change their defence? Because they've come out in, in what looked to be a, a match-up defence up the floor. Now that New South Wales have called that timeout, do they change their defence? Do they go to a little bit more of a structured press up the floor? Do they go from that back to a zone to try and disrupt? Obviously, New South have called this to try and get something different. They, they want a specific look. They might be trying to target someone uh, that they feel like they have a good match-up on defensively. But uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a really interesting last four minutes here because this can easily go either way. Yes, four minutes and eight seconds remaining. And I dare say there'll be quite a number of players that'll be quite enjoying this little bit of respite. Game clock adjustment. And both Jufferman and Petrie remain in the game. And New South Wales load up, leading by two in this semi-final contest with a state of origin flavour. And this is the change defensively. This gave uh, Queensland a chance to throw the zone on. It didn't work. Uh, but it was a decent change up by Coach Jackie Brown there, but it was really good offence with the New South team to try and find their cut on the way to the rim. Emma Donnelly up to five points. Petrie from outside with a hot hand, doesn't go. Twydale, desperate stuff, does well to salvage something from that contest. There's Dart, now back to Petrie, steps back outside the arc, fires and short on the shot. Uh, she's getting progressively further and further out, Queensland, which I would suggest means New South Wales is applying more and more pressure, which they should be doing. We've seen her capabilities of landing them from out, well outside, but obviously the percentages are low. That's good work on that occasion by Carla Pittman. She's got five points and extends the margin to six. Seeing a little bit of extended pressure here from New South Wales up the floor. Dow White. Boy in her face. Petrie puts the ball to the floor. Great athleticism, goes to the corner, dart, drives and dishes, and landing it from outside is Hayley Mattel Light. Once again, great skip pass there from Petrie. Realised she doesn't have the opportunity there to go get her score. Makes that skip pass to Dart over on the opposite wing, who finds a great kick out pass to Mattel White. That was really great offense from Queensland. Three points separate the sides. Here's the Blues, attacking the glass once again. It drops. Carl Pittman, she's up to seven. It does feel like every time Queensland starts to make a bucket, build into momentum. New South Wales have found an answer coming back, so defensively, Queensland will need to tidy that up a little bit on the way forward. Heavy contest as uh, players from both sides go to ground. Foul called. Two minutes and seven seconds remain in the first half. 37 plays, 32. The Blues ring the changes as to. Queensland. And Queensland. Edge closer. Wide open. Firing and connecting. That's Mattel White. Big, big three from Mattel White. You saw that cross screen action there from Queensland to try and get Peachy the ball on the post. See if they could get Jumpman to pick up her third foul. But uh, a fantastic shot from uh, McDowell White there. Hey, Roost drives and is fouled in the process. He's going to go to the line. And that's one of the ones. Queensland have just made the three to bring it back within the two-point game. The last thing they want to do is be giving up a foul and a drive in that situation there. So it's the it's the next possession after a score for Queensland that's really let them down to this stage. They, they don't want to get into that one-for-one -one battle with, with, with New South over the course. Inside the final two minutes of the opening half, Hey, Roost to the line. 
to add to her seven points. Hits the first. Two for two for Carews. She's got nine points, the margin back out to four. Queensland. This is Harvey. Now Petrie. Looks inside to Harvey. Back to Petrie. Finishes. Uh, fantastic offense again from Queensland. Here's the real test. Can they get a stop here to, to keep their momentum going? 39-37, New South Wales leading by two. Martin, Carews, Henderson. 73 seconds left in the quarter. Henderson, dishes, Carews, heavy on the shot. That hurts. Donnelly, the rescue mission. Jaffermans puts it up. Heavily pressured by the Queensland defence. Queensland do well. Petrie rips down the defensive board. Gives their side another opportunity. Here's Twydale, outmatched one, two. Can't make the first offensive rebound and finishes. Big, big possession there for Queensland. Dodged a little bit of a board down that end. They uh, they didn't get the offensive board straight away. Didn't clean that up. Huge rebound from Petrie. And then to push the ball in transition, finds Tidal, who grabs her own miss and then goes up strong and, and gets the chance of a three-point play. We have seen New South Wales just being a little bit erratic on the offensive end the last couple of possessions. They do need to just slow down a little bit. They, they haven't really been able to find Juffman's on a, on a really clean look this quarter. Uh, and, and what we are seeing down the, the offensive end for Queensland is, is Petrie's doing a great job of stretching their defence because she's hit those couple of threes. Juffman's is having to come further and further out. So something New South Wales might want to look at doing is maybe switching that matchup to keep Juffman's closer to home and having one of the, the other players come and guard Petrie on the perimeter there. The, the danger there, I suppose, is that Petrie's very good in the post and can go and score on you there. So it is a, a little bit of a chess match here going on between the two coaches. And the and one from Lulu Twydale puts her team in front. They lead by that one point heading towards halftime. Just 30 seconds remain. 40-39 Queensland. Here's Carews. One way, then the other. Doesn't drop. Jufferman's with the offensive board. She's got one to come and makes the basket. And that's where they haven't really been able to see Jufferman this quarter. She's been very well held on the offensive rebound. But you can't do it forever. Great job on the position. Managed to get the, the points and the, the foul on this one. This will give Queensland the last position here unless New South Wales decide to jump up the floor and try and disrupt. Doesn't finish. 20 seconds left. New South Wales by one. Queensland an opportunity. Clock counts down. 10 seconds left. Here's Petrie for three. Overcooks the shot. They might get another opportunity. They do. Once again, can't complete. Desperate sort of attempt. Foul drawn. Well, we've spoken about the uh, the offensive rebounding of New South Wales to this point in the game. Uh, a great job by Queensland on that one. They had two fairly good looks at it. Petrie, you would never begrudge her taking the shot from where she took it from, the way she shot the ball for this game. So, right shot, but great chase down by Queensland on that. Jade Peacock. Ties it up at 41 apiece for their first basket. Two for two for Jay Peacock. And Queensland lead by one at the half. In a, in a half of basketball that we would, for all intent, intents and purposes, suggest New South Wales dominated. Yeah, I don't think we really expected Queensland to be ahead of the half here. They got down by double digits. It was looking fairly comfortable for, for New South Wales there. Queensland just found a way. They kept chipping away. They didn't try and do it all in a hurry. Obviously, we've spoken at length about Jess Petrie to this point. I mean, she shot the ball fantastically well with, with 21 points. But, but also the play of McDowell, White and Dart for Queensland. They've found ways to get involved. Fantastic half of basketball. Queensland 42. Lead New South Wales 41 at the half. This is semi-final stage of our under-20 championships. Thanks to Foot Locker. You're on Community TV. We'll be back in a few moments. Hey, this is Josh Green out here in Full Locker, Sydney. Good to be back in Sydney. Be able to give back. Awesome vibes here. Love it. Josh Green there with the block. See Josh Green. Green running the floor. Green. Drives 
Basketball Australia has a range of coaching options for anyone working with basketball players from Aussie Hoopers through to coaches working in the community. These can all be found in our online courses. To register for one of these courses, simply visit coach.basketball.net.au and sign up. Our Aussie Hoops and Community Online courses are free to do. While you're there, you can also download our Building Better Basketball podcast with great coaching guests such as Sydney Kings assistant coach Floor McIntyre or watch one of our many recorded coaching clinics such as this one with Boomers assistant coach Mike Kelly. Hopefully more associations, more clubs, more organisations are opening themselves up to the value of females and having a diverse coaching group. Um, because I think all individuals bring some different strengths to the table. And I think if, if we have everything the same, then nothing really changes. So I think there's some value adding there when we embrace diversity. My point is this, if I'm this low man, I'm the, I'm the quarterback. I'm the one who tells you what to do. So if I think it's a fire and I need to put it out, that ball's been passed there. If I'm going, ball, 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 you gotta, you gotta fly, okay? Yeah. Introducing She Hoops, an Australian first online platform for women in basketball. From live mentoring sessions to panel sessions, exclusive interviews with the biggest names in the sport, education and upskilling courses, networking opportunities, and a whole lot more. And best of all, it's all free. Welcome to She Hoops. I'm making his dog, like I'm in the big leagues, told him that I gotta go, dog. I'm riding a road, y'all, I think that I'm back in my bag now, so I need that go, y'all, got hits when he throw in the fastball, just too quick for it, peeling off like the whip orange, seen the effort, this piss poor, I got too much, I got to tend to, car payments and the rent due, told y'all that I'm six foot, but with the money stabbing, I'm ten to, too much that I've been through, so I put it all in that rear view, clean money in a black whip, got old problems with a friend. When you look at the elite levels of basketball, there's a lot of pathways at that level. But when you talk about community grassroots, it's a lot harder, I think, to sort of break through that barrier. But I think this platform is trying to sort of bridge that gap. This platform really starts to drive pathways and opportunities, particularly around the pillars of, of coaching, officiating and administrating. That's why this platform is important to me.
Welcome back to the arena in Geelong for the second half of our semi-final contest in the Generation Next under 20 foot locker national championships for 2023. It's a cracking contest in the women's game between New South Wales and Queensland. And against most of the flow of the game, Queensland lead by one at the half. Things break down for New South Wales on offense. Might have been a Queensland hand in, so they'll get another opportunity. I think that uh, some of the players were as deceived as I was there on that occasion. They she, ran up the wrong end of the floor. She, I was standing right behind her. I could have sworn it was going to be Queensland ball, so I have no idea what I was looking at there. Hope you're enjoying the coverage on Community TV. It's fantastic to have this broadcast all around the world, and I'm sure there's many viewers right across New South Wales and Queensland in particular loving what they're seeing. As there's Queensland picking the pass off. Queensland drive. And that's Hayley Mattel White. She has two. She's got eight points. Mattel White's been fantastic. They just played her role within the, the structure they've had. Way to jump out of the lane on that last one there. Go and get herself two points to as well as the two made threes for the second quarter. Pittman. Well, I think she, her intended target was Jufferman's there on that occasion. But things just broke down. So here's Petrie, the opposing big. He doesn't mind putting the ball to the floor. She decides against putting up a shot herself. Dow White has been prominent through that second quarter in particular. Twydale fires in front of the iron. New South Wales clean up the scraps. This is Kayroos. This is the screen nicely. She'll get an opportunity here. She goes in board to Jufferman's. But backs away to the basket. Deans have coughed up an offensive foul. So really well defended there by Summer Hanson. She bailed out Jess Petrie, who got caught on that cross screen action before. Hanson jumps across, way to take the contact, stands her straight up. She knew she's played as well with Isla Jumpman. She knew she wanted to make that little drop step to go back to her right hand. Read it really well, and Jumpman gives up the foul. That's her third. So the decision to be made here for New South Wales, do you keep her in? and run the risk of her getting her fourth foul, or do you try and protect her a little bit? As we see New South Wales go to this bit of a 1-2-2, two, two, a 3-2 zone to try and disrupt Queensland, and probably protect up from foul. Petrie pops the two. She has got the hot hand today, 24 points for Jess Petrie. Has been everywhere, and that's the danger when you go to the zone. You, you run that risk of just allowing shooters with a little bit less pressure where they can just go and find theirs. And uh, that will be a little bit of a problem as we see the, the bucket made. The foul drawn there by Hanson has been very physical defensively, but just a little bit overzealous on that one. This is Kay Roos looking to add to her nine points. She was good yesterday. She's uh, started today. disappointed with that result no hamburgers on offer for double misses here unfortunately at the national champs Rob uh, as much as we probably like that but probably a good thing probably a good thing it doesn't make either so Petrie brings it up the floor once again that's going, it's up. Player. That's going up fires oh. from the iron just short Henderson outnumbered but takes it to the glass and finishes. Played the whole game at this point, Henderson. She's, uh, she hasn't come out yet. She's got a great feel for the game. And way to make a great decision there. Just saw the gap to get into and just go and get herself a bucket. The zone defense from New South Wales just causing a little bit of a stall in the, the Queensland offense here. The Basketball Australia partners support us falling in game day for making this possible. Of course, naming rights partner Footlocker, fantastic supporters of the next generation of Australian basketballers. Petrie fires, doesn't connect. Hey, Ruse. Martin inboard to Jufferman's. Double teamed once again. Means Kay Roos has got a bit of room in which to move back to Jufferman's. Clever work by New South Wales and Jufferman's 
capitalises with her 13th point. Yeah, good offense there. Just to be really patient. Waiting until the double team got to then managed to find the easy pass from here and jump and contributes on the scoreboard again. From the corner, Dart. Fires. Plenty of iron, but it won't go. Good option again, though. That was a, a pretty clean look. And tough market there. As Henderson goes for the win again. In the double figures, Felicity Henderson. Petrie. Goes at Juffermans. Oh, beautiful work by Petrie. And you just see Juffermans being really cautious. The last thing she wants to do here is pick up a fourth foul. So my guess is that Queensland are going to have the ball in Petrie's hands a lot, in particular on the perimeter, to try and get Juffermans a fourth foul. 48 place, 47. Queensland with a slender advantage. Approaching mid the midway mark of this third term. Martin. And one. Puts the Blues back in front. Hanson and Dow White take a break from the game for Queensland. Katie Martin. The Blues lead by two. Fifty forty eight. Petrie. Fires for a long two. Doesn't go. Bit of action under the basket. It's going to be a Queensland ball. Getting more and more physical off the ball at the moment with, uh, with bumping at putters, trying to get bodies on box here. Really entertaining basketball to see. Well, they know what's on the line. Placed in the final. Skip past the Petrie from the corner. Firing but not connecting was Harvey. Now New South Wales on the charge. Carews with good pace. Goes all the way herself. Can't finish. Wide out. Good desperate defence by Martin. To a certain point. To a degree, hey, it's you keep being physical until you can't be physical anymore. And uh, what I would probably be looking at here if I'm Queensland is having the ball in Dart's hands just a little bit more. He's seen the most poised out of all the guards from Queensland. And with that defensive pressure just really coming up from New South Wales, I'd, I'd be trying to find a way to get the ball in her hands. She made great decisions with it. Here she is now, Dart. Here she goes back to Dart. Midway mark at the third turn. Dart dishes to the corner. Queenslanders can't connect. Now's an opportunity. Twido with some open space. Doesn't finish. What an outstanding board, though, from, uh, from Queensland to get into that contest. Rapid speed up the floor. And that's Carla Pittman up to nine points. Petrie from a long way out and lands the three. Wow, we 28 points. I'm not sure she was in too long when she let that go. That was a <laughs> long way behind the three-point line there. 52-51, New South Wales hold a slender advantage. Queensland coming hard. Looping pass over the top. Well hauled in by Pittman. Jafferman's from distance. Doesn't drop. Petrie with the defensive board. Just got a few possessions here up and down without breaks in play. You see Jaffman's carrying that hand all the way out to Petrie on the perimeter there. So the, the difference a, a great shooter has made to the New South Wales defense. Petrie, uh, Petrie being able to hit from out there has caused Jaffman to come all the way away from the bucket with a hand up. She puts herself in a position to pick up a foul there. Incredible versatility by Petrie. Here's Jaffermans. She responds. One to come. Uh, way to get that gather by Jaffman there. She's 
probably had a few uh, shots where there's been probably a little bit more contact than that, so she's definitely owed that one. An interesting little dart sits down. Dow White back into the contest for Queensland. Jaffman's looking to add to her 15 points. She doesn't. And immediately Natal White in the action with the, the rebound. Dishes to Petrie. Called for travel. Please then go to his own. You can see Coach Jackie Brown calling for his own. South Wales horn in action, just egging their team along. Carews fires front of the iron. It was a bit of an unnecessary foul there for New South Wales. They really had the ball going to the sideline already. They had numbers back. Probably didn't need the foul in that situation. The Blues by three. 326 remaining in the third term. Really engaging contest, this one. Hope you're enjoying it. Almost a turnover by Queensland. Petrie steps back, unleashes, overcooks the shot. Rebound by Henderson. Carews. Counting down, seven seconds left, firing, doesn't connect. Shufflemans cleans up the scraps. Dishes to Henderson who drives, puts it up with the left. Ripped down by Queensland, Jay Peacock. That's been fantastic on the board, Peacock. Putting it through hands, Queensland, then driving and finishing. That is Aaron Harvey. The margins won. New South Wales holding that slender advantage. Down to five. Firing. Petrie. Clydale. Attacks the defender. Makes the basket. Great work, Clydale. That's a fantastic finish. Just knew the contact was going to come at some point. Didn't have to change the shot completely. Rode the bump and then managed to get the finish. Nice work by Donnelly. Rips it down. Jufferman saves it. Now Carews. Bit of open floor. Back to Jufferman's. She goes from outside. You see fatigue starting to set in a little bit for Jufferman. She hasn't come out this quarter. She's had to do a lot of the lifting with... With Petrie having to guard her out on the perimeter as well as trying to carry some scoring for New South as well. So they're going to have to make a, a decision fairly soon. Do they continue to play this ball or do they get her a break before the three quarter time? Here's Twydale. Steps back. Fires for three. Bubbled around the basket. Didn't go. Final 60 seconds of the third term. Henderson's done a great job this game of just really controlling the tempo. She still managed to get herself points by, by attacking the rim, but it has really understood when to go and when not to go. Queensland by one. Inboard to Jufferman's. New South Wales ball. Wholesale changes for Queensland. Four players injected into the game. I think this might be the, uh, the Jufferman sub here. Well called Rob. Right on it there. Looks like a zone here from Queensland off the baseline as well. So just trying to take a, a little bit of time off the clock here with only six seconds on the shot clock. Uh, my guess is that New South Wales will be looking to that middle of the zone if they can. Boy comes in for Carews. 46 seconds left. Donnelly fires and connects. Fifty-seven, fifty-five. New South Wales by two-point margin. Thirty seconds left in the third term. Oh, don't leave Matthew White out there. Matthew White can't connect. Good work by Crawshaw. Oh, fumble! New South Wales retain possession. 
Henderson. Pittman. Pittman drives. Dishes to Donnelly for two. Couple of good minutes for Donnelly. Firing on the buzzer. No good. It's New South Wales by four at three quarter time. Really interesting quarter. Been an entertaining game all the way through. The ladies have put down a great performance for all the fans out there. This has been a, a really up and down game. We're seeing the, the scout be applied by both groups of players at the moment. It's I mean, what are we in day five or six so far of this tournament? So the, the bodies are starting to get a little bit more fatigued as the ball goes up and down. They know where their scoring options are coming from. We've obviously seen Petrie with the, the 28 points. And she's been uh, she's been outstanding. Juffman's has, has been really good with her 15 as well. Henderson with 10 has contributed. It, I think it's going to be really what happens with that next level of scorer. Is there going to be somebody else from one of the teams coming and contribute to some additional points? That uh, you know, when, when Petrie's sitting there with 28 points and eight rebounds, that's a that's a pretty good return for her. Where she's probably going to look at going now, but she's probably cooled off just a little bit from the three-point line. Probably putting the ball on the floor a little more now and seeing if she can tack off the bounce and, and try and get herself to the foul line. I, I think that's going to be a, a good return for her investment coming through in this, this last quarter. For New South Wales, you know, every time they've been challenged, they've been responded. They've found a way to go and get themselves a, a bucket or get to the foul line or just do something to just keep that pressure on Queensland where they've never been comfortable either. Four points separate the two sides. Crowd building further I suppose uh, some supporters coming in and then in anticipation of the next game to come but uh, there's a lot of parents have traveled with these teams the siblings no doubt that have come along and really enjoying this contest well between the, the weather yesterday and the supporters here you cannot buy a full noodle anywhere in Geelong <laughs> Uh, quietly as well a little bit of a, a triple double watch here for Henderson with the uh, the 10 points the eight boards and the six assists she's uh, she's doing a little bit of everything here for New South Wales yeah, impressive Petrie leads the scoring with 28 points McDowell White has eight and for New South Wales who lead by four it's Jufferman's with 15 Donnelly has 10 and five of those came pretty much in the final 60 seconds of that third term as of a breakdown to begin the fourth quarter and here's quite out Queensland Lil Dart Dow White and here's Petrie turns and shoots doesn't finish Better area for her too. They, they're obviously trying to get her in that post now. The Jumpman's checked out of the game. They feel like they like her size advantage in the post. So it is something to watch for for New South Wales this quarter. From the corner, the Blues fire. Don't find the iron. Donnelly has had some very good minutes. Just straddling three-quarter time. Another offensive rebound. That's the, the 14th, 15th that uh, Queensland have given up to this point. Wider. Lots of opportunities. Petrie with the offensive board and then finishes. 30 points for Petrie. That's had a heck of a night, hasn't it? She's been everywhere in this one. Lose by four. Henderson. Go for the offensive foul. Well defended by McDowell White. I've been really impressed with her in this game. Once again, both ends of the floor. She's been a really calming influence on offense. She's taken the right shots when she's had to take the right shots. But defensively, she's done a great job containing the ball. Read the drive really well on that one. He got back in for Queensland. Queensland, oh, great pass. not able to finish there on that occasion. Dart will go again. She does it. She draws a foul. Well, it turns out the missed shot actually has been very beneficial for them as she goes to the foul line here. Great pass there again by McDowell White. Like, drew the two players, knew where the extra pass was going to come from. Really well weighted. Chances 
Guffman's back into the game. Joe Isla comes the call from the New South Wales faithful. And Dart is up to five points. And we've got a one-point game with eight and a half minutes remaining in the fourth term. Here's Martin. Receives back from Juffermans. Donnelly, who's been in a real purple patch in recent moments. Foy puts it up, banks in two. Great finish. Really well defended against Robert Dow White. That is the force on the outside to keep for that shot. It's just a really classy finish there for Foy. Pretty, uh, plenty of confidence. That was her first basket of the game. New South Wales by three points. Dart steps back, lands the three, and ties it up here at the arena in Geelong. Outstanding. Way to use the on-ball screen. Peacock was probably a little late at getting there, but still managed to find a space coming off that for the three. Only a touch unlucky there with Tidale. She did a pretty good job bumping the cutter, I felt, on that one. But once again, it's uh, they're going to have to try and guard Jufferman's by committee as we see a timeout towards New South Wales here. 7.35 remain in the game. We are locked at 63 points apiece. Isla Juffermans leads the scoring for the Blues with 15. Donnelly has 12. And Felicity Henderson has 10. For Queensland, Petrie has just been enormous in this game. 30 points for her and 8 points apiece to Lil Dart and Hayley McDowell-White. Really interesting time out here. You're, you're getting to that point where... You're trying to make your last adjustments, I think, for the rest of the game. You don't want to, to overdo things, though. You, you look to try and find a, a way to get your best players their best shots that they can get for the remainder of this one. You, I don't think any team really has to manage fouls at this point. Like, Twydale's got three now. Uh, you know, Henderson has got three. Juffman has got three. Pittman's got three. So they're all in an OK spot, but it will be something that they have to manage a little bit if they pick up one more than any of those. So it is something to be really conscious of. What you do defensively, do you want to jump up the floor? Traditionally, the fourth quarter tends to be one where they don't tend to call as many fouls for some reason. So there will be a lot more physicality you haven't played through for both teams. Yeah, it's that uh, perennial question about officialdom as to whether or not what you call in the first 60 seconds is called in the final 60 seconds. It doesn't matter what sport we're talking about. Hey, it's a tough gig. It's, uh, from here, very, very easy to reference. Oh, but, absolutely. Uh, down there, not so much. No, I, uh, I really admire our basketball officials. As Donnelly fires and just nicks the iron, but it don't, doesn't go anywhere near dropping. Here's Petrie. Great board. run of the rim there by Peacock. But, uh, did a fantastic job. Realised she had a, a mismatch. Great decision to go there. Just unlucky. It was pretty well defended. New South Wales managed to get back into that and, uh, and have the ball back because of it. So now the Blues with 7.15 remaining in the game. In board to Juffermans. Double team. She puts up the shot. Offensive board. And again, she'll get multiple opportunities and she's eventually going to make it. Yeah, I mean, that's two awards on the one possession. She's, she's too good a player not to, to score in those situations. Because they fell off, there may have been a little bit of a push-off there, but uh, you know, there's a little bit of contact both ways, to be fair. Driving. Queensland not able to finish. New South Wales lead by two. Martin. Donnelly. Foy. Foy tries to dish out. Lil Dart gets involved. Good work by Carews. Donnelly from the corner. Gets the shot away just in time. Great defensive effort by Queensland. It was. Both teams get a little bit of a breather here, which I think is uh, <laughs> very much welcomed by both groups. We're, uh, we're getting into that that point of the game, I think, where uh, fatigue will start to set in for both teams. So they do need to be really mindful as to how they use their bench in this last six minutes. Dart. Just wide out. Queensland. Thank you very much, Joe Peacock. 
great contribution from Peacock during this game. She's come off the bench. She's really impacted on the board. She's had seven of those so far. That's her fourth point of the game as well. She's had a, a really good impact. Go to Jufferman's once again. And she says, that's the reason why they keep coming to me. She's got 19 points. It's just too strong down there. Queensland need to do their work early. There needs to be more ball pressure on the guard so that that pass can't go in there. But defensively guarding the post, you can't let her get that deep. 67-65. Well, apart from the opening phase of the first term when New South Wales broke uh, away to a substantial lead. This has been really neck and neck all game, hasn't it? Yeah, it absolutely has. It's, uh, it's been a really good contest on this end. It's, uh, it, it's one of those things where neither team's really been able to crack the other one. They, they've both run some punches there, but uh, they've never really been able to, to get it to a point where they've felt comfortable. Peacock makes the first. to Jay Peacock and we're locked at 67 apiece midway through the fourth term Henderson uses Pittman looks to Donnelly from the corner Henderson baseline drive then dishes to Caruso who fires and hits the three got a dozen wide open Lil Dart she is short on the shot New South Wales do well here's Twydale the Blues by three in board to Petrie the skip pass was just a little too heavy handed here's Pittman she drives and dishes Henderson kicks it out Carews back to Henderson she fires and hits it. Now it's a six-point advantage. And Tom out there for Queensland and definitely needed that one. You can just see the Queensland girls starting to get a little bit fatigued. They're asking Peach to do everything from guarding New South Wales, most important player down one end, to also carry the scoring load down the other end. So she needs a little bit of a break. When they go back-to-back -back from the three-point line, you absolutely need to, to arrest that scoring run where you can and try and resettle your group. 24 remains in the game. 73 plays, 67. Jufferman's with 19 points. Henderson has 13. Carews has 12, along with Emma Donnelly. And then for Queensland, far and away, the leading scorer is Jess Petrie with an outstanding 30 points in this game so far. Lil Dart has eight, and Hayley McDowell-White has eight. And, and from here, I mean, if you're New South, you're obviously in a pretty good position, but you also want to be in a point where you're not taking any risks here. If you can just continue to, to hold up Queensland as best you can here, force them into bad shots, continue to crash the offensive board, that's where they've been really effective is being able to out-rebound Queensland. Nothing really needs to change for them. They're in a, a really good spot at this point. For Queensland, all the work to do. They're the ones that have to start to make changes, have to start trying to find different ways to score, have to try and find different ways to defend the post. And they just need the ball back more than anything else. They need to, the ball to go through the net down one end, they need to get it back at the other. Four twenty-one remains in the contest. 73-67. Twydale, Petrie, fires for two. Doesn't hit it. Pittman, cleaning up the scraps. Henderson's been huge in this fourth term. Kicks it out. Pittman. Back to Henderson, who fires. A little heavy. This gives the opportunity for Queensland to respond. Sydney said, well, it's really loading up on spin line there. They're really conscious about post ups and triple penetration coming through. But down wide. Petrie with the catch late. Obviously, very heavily contested out there. Petrie, oh, they've lost sight of that one. Here's Carews. Donnelly finishes. 
a, a really tough position there for Queensland. They just, a little bit of miscommunication after the on-ball screen as to where everyone was supposed to be going. Leads to breakout points there for Queensland. Just lost their way a little bit. They respond on this occasion. And Jay Peacock adds two and she'll go to the line for one. Yeah, fatigue becoming a factor for players on both sides as Lil Dart back into the action. Mattel White sits down with eight points. Queensland in deficit by six. Short on the shot is Henderson. Just been a ball of energy in this fourth term, Henderson. Has been fantastic. When everyone else is getting a little more fatigued, she looks like she's still holding strong out there. She drives and she makes the two. What a play by Henderson. Fantastic bucket. She's been super poised throughout this game. Every time they've needed to score, she's found a way to either get herself to score or get someone else to score. Defensively, has been as sold as a rock down the other end. She's up to 15. She's got one to come. She's given her team an eight-point spread. Plenty of iron, but it doesn't go Jufferman's. She'll get an opportunity. And look, there's Henderson once again. Pops up. I've got a jack in a box. She goes hard at Petrie, then dishes to the corner. Donnelly doesn't hit it. Petrie with the defensive rebound. Now Twydale. Eight points in deficit, Queensland. Two and a half minutes remaining in the contest. Placing the championship game on the line. Lil Dart. From the corner. Not finishing Hanson. Good work by Peacock. Rescues at one. Dart wide open. She can't hit the three. They've had some opportunities on that position. Queensland. New South Wales a little bit lucky. They put a couple of scrambles on closeout. But Queensland couldn't punish them for it. This is Henderson. Jufferman's going hard and stripped or was that a foul call? Out of bounds. Out of bounds. So 148 remaining in the contest, eight point lead. At what point did New South Wales start to consider taking some uh, air out of the ball, so to speak? Uh, they're, they're probably already in that position, I think. Uh, they're just calling a timeout here. So they don't need to do anything from here. You shouldn't really be giving up nine points that's going to be needed to win the game in the in the minute 48 but you know Queensland are going to try and play with as much tempo as they possibly can they're going to try and push the ball threes early threes in the clock try and get points as soon as they possibly can so for New South Wales they don't need to do anything that they haven't been doing to this point they've been fairly poised they've been very deliberate with where they're going in particular when the ball's in the in the hands of Henderson just get her the ball she makes great decisions with it she finds other people she gets them open she finds ways to get everyone involved in their offense so from a new south wales perspective they don't need to do anything special there's there's four seconds on the clock here which is going to be interesting for them as they take the ball out on the baseline but from a queensland end they need to take a little bit of a gamble obviously see this possession out and try and go as best you possibly can but from here they probably need to up the floor a little bit more and trying to disrupt they do have fouls to give so they probably have a little bit of a gamble at it if they need to I think uh, I'm, I made reference to Henderson's energy in this fourth term, but it's a game awareness too that's been enormous. Oh, phenomenal. So 15 points, 11 boards, 8 assists. Uh, and just the two turnovers. And for someone that's had the ball in her hand so much to get to this point of the game with only two turnovers, outstanding effort. And she will be responsible for the inbound pass with 148 remaining in the contest. New South Wales leads 77 69 over Queensland, who Conceded the early advantage and then were gallant in coming back hard. Here's Jufferman. Ball bobbles around. Queensland win it. They need to move quickly and they also need to maintain control of the ball, which they didn't on that occasion. Definitely. They, uh, they did what they needed to do. They got the stop and unfortunately just overshot that one a little bit in, uh, on the pass in transition. You can see the coaches now just saying up, up, trying to find different ways to, to get the ball out of their hands. On 39 remains, 77-69. Ball in Henderson's hands. 
They'll use the 24, you'd imagine. Nice screen by Juppermans. Henderson with some room to move. Donnelly from the corner. Fires. Front of the iron. Doesn't go. Going to have to go quick here. They're, uh, they do need a, a high quality shot for sure, but you know, they just need to go quick. They need as many possessions left in this game as they can possibly get. This is quite a... Time is of the essence for Queensland. Petrie, who's been enormous, goes from the car park. Doesn't drop. Jaffermans. New South Wales can just try to use up as much time as possible now. They hold that eight point advantage. Good work by Pittman to Henderson, Donnelly, Carews. Inside the final 60 seconds of the game, Carews dishes to Jaffermans. She finishes. 21 points for Jaffermans. A great finish there. Really great ball movement there by the New South Wales team. Managed to get it through hands. They took time off the clock but ended up with a really high quality shot at the end of it. Contested ball. Desperation at ground level by players on both sides. Queensland. Bench looks deflated. New South Wales up and about. They know they're Championship final bound. Great to see our volunteer floor wipers in action too. So many volunteers contributing to what's been a fantastic championship here in Geelong. Hope you've enjoyed it through community TV. Be careful here, there's going to be a late run. I would suggest uh, from New South Wales to try and get the ball down the floor. They have to be really mindful to not give anything up here. They need the ball back and you don't want to give anything up. 27 seconds left. Henderson. They went in board to Jaffermans. It was picked off by Dart. They've taken up the floor. Need to get a quick shot away. Twydale. Queensland. Not able to complete. That was McDowell White. 79-69 with just four seconds remaining. New South Wales will enter the final. In our under 20 championship. And there's the buzzer. New South Wales into the final. And they are absolutely elated and richly deserving. They are, and they deserve to be able to celebrate on this. The half hard is, is resetting for tomorrow. It's, uh, it's a great effort to get into the final, but they're incredibly hard to win in that space, too. So for them, enjoy the moment now, and then look for tomorrow as soon as they can. Jaffermans led the scoring with 21 points, Donnelly 14, Felicity Henderson 15, and Carews had 12 for Queensland. Jess Petrie was enormous with 30 points, and then three players with eight points apiece, Lil Dart, Hayley McDowell-White, and Jay Peacock. Just some uh, concluding comments, Rob, to uh, give us your assessment on the way in which that was played out. Yeah, a fantastic game. It's been one of the most enjoyable games of the tournament to watch for me so far. Obviously a heck of an effort by... Uh, Queensland to be in this position. Um, Petrie was obviously amazing, but the congratulations to New South Wales. They're obviously fairly elated at this stage as well. They are indeed. Thank you so much to those people that have joined us via Community TV. We hope you've enjoyed the Under-20 Footlocker National Championship semi-final.